it's Jennifer Hammond. And I'm so excited. I have a very special guest. He is a veteran, many years in the service, but also understands the value of real estate investing. So Kenneth Cunningham, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Jennifer, for having me. Well, I'm so excited to have you because I know you also understand the value of real estate and real estate investing. So will you share a little bit about your story? Yes, Jennifer. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. And <clears throat> my story uh, starts out, I was in the military. I got in the military in 1985. Okay. Went to basic training in 85. Actually went for um, uh, not, not regular army. I went for uh, reserves. I went for army reserve and then I went active duty. So that's how I started back in 85, I guess. And uh, as far as real estate goes with, with uh, being in the military, I never knew that when you got out of the military, you could go to the VA and they would, you know, prove your service and they would give they would give you a voucher to get a home. They would actually, you know, sign off for a home and, uh, you know, vouch for you to get a house. I never knew that until after I got out of the military. That's one great thing about being a veteran, that you do have a lot of, uh, benefits that you know they don't really tell you about when you get in yeah the, one of them the va mortgage is huge a zero down mortgage to be able to help you get a mortgage and even they have uh like the va right now has a streamlined refinance which is fantastic for veterans so there's lots and lots of benefits that they don't know but but you also um you have a farm right yes yes i i have a farm i have uh, probably we probably have in the neighborhood about 500 acres that we uh control my family and i in arkansas uh horses cows we own uh, mostly cattle and horses and stuff like that and uh you know that comes from you know growing up there uh my grandfather actually kind of started the farm there and <clears throat> we uh all my cousins and my dad brothers and all that took care of it for years and now kind of dwindling a little bit as far as the people there but we we still got all the land and stuff that you know was wheeled to us through generations anyway well, but, uh, well your grandfather uh, must have told you that land was important right can you share a story about your grandfather teaching you about yes he said land? owning your own land is very very important because you know back in the days they wouldn't you know let african americans own land so when he did get a chance to buy some he worked he chopped stumps for 50 cents a day 50 cents a day for five years where he could save up enough money to buy a property. So, you know, he walked to work. It was probably about 15 mile walk, one way every day. That's, that's a lot. That's a, that's determination, but that's where they grew up in those days. That's what you had to do. So, you know, I can never imagine walking 15 miles one way every day. Can't really think about doing that. And for 50 cents a day, that's, you know, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty phenomenal when you really think about it. Right. And he he bought that land and then he actually made sure that you guys understood the value of that land, right? Yes, he sure did. I mean, he made sure we told us we never have to sell it. I mean, you, you always have a place to come back to. I mean, you always have a place to build a home on. You always have a place to, you know, to actually make a living. You know, back in that days, farming, you know, farming. You always had a place to farm and all that. So, you know, now we run cattle on most of it and all that. So, you know, he he had some forethought uh being you know way back in that time as far as you know giving leaving something for the family leaving something for your family yeah you know, so that's his basic thing is legacy you know leaving something for your family that will do it forever so. so i want to go on a little bit of a side note um because i think it's really beautiful you have always believed in multiple streams of income i know and one yeah. one thing you love is to be the best of the best with barbecue and barbecue sauce. Will you talk a little uh, bit about that? <laughs> yes, I'll talk a little bit about the sauces goes along with my grandfather. He was a he was pretty he was a little bit of a cook and stuff like that. So he uh people used to come for miles around with him. You know, we used to hang meat in their smokehouses back in the day as they call them. They used to hang meat, let it cure, you know, you put a lot of salt on it and then you let it cure. He used to let it hang for a long time and people would come by when I was a little boy, they'd come by and want to have a little barbecue and you know, cook up some of the meat and all that. So that's how that really got started. And we came up with our own barbecue sauce. And, you know, it's been going on for 
probably about a little over 100 years now, I guess, as far as us doing barbecue and stuff. That was and that barbecue sauce, it's famous, isn't it? It's won awards, right? Yes, ma'am. It's Cunningham's barbecue sauce. Yes, it's Cunningham's BBQ. Uh, we do have uh, a little place in Arkansas right off I-40, uh, a little restaurant. So, yeah. And then I do a little selling down here in uh, Florida, and my brother does some in Richmond. So, yeah, we do uh, – we do a lot of barbecue selling. Yes, we do. Well, I think that's really special because, again, I believe it's always important to have multiple streams of income, but also to make sure that you are really living up to your passion. And I know you are very passionate about that barbecue, even if yes, it I takes am. 24 hours, 12 hours to do that barbecue and right? Yes, we yes we do have. We, we have a recipe. Usually we cook meats, uh, most of our meats, especially brisket. We, uh, well, we pride ourselves on our brisket and our Baby back ribs, but the brisket is uh probably cooked probably about twelve to fifteen hours on a smoker, so yeah we we cook it we cook it a long time and make sure it's really tender you know with our seasonings and all that so it's just something to behold. I love some brisket, I really do. I'm a big brisket fan. Well, and I love your ribs, and I've had the salmon that you have cooked, and of course your barbecue sauce. So I can firsthand attest to the fact that it is absolutely fantastic. Well, we appreciate you saying that, but uh, yeah, a lot of people say that. We, uh, we've we been doing it for a little over 100 years, so I guess if they got tired of us, we wouldn't be out of business by now. <laughs> but no, but no, it's uh, it's a really good sauce, and uh, we take a lot of pride in it. We take a lot of pride in our cooking. We want to make sure it's cooked with love. We always try to make sure that's done, and uh, we just want to make sure people are happy and enjoying the product. So, so. Absolutely. So let's talk about... Residential real estate, you have, I know you had the property in Maryland that recently you sold, and, but you've always had properties that you rent out. Can you talk a little bit about why you have felt like those kind of real estate investment properties and that cash flow was important well, to your future? Well, uh, I guess, you know, as far as, you know, you have your own business when you rent, okay? It's actually a business. You know, you get a Schedule E on your tax return, so you actually get a business. So it's a business when you're really renting out a property. So that's a good thing for most little small entrepreneurs like myself, you know, that, I mean, you can have a business pretty quick. You'll get a rental property, and these days a lot of people don't know uh, about that you can get, they have a, uh, a loan. I forgot the exact terminology of the loan, but as long as the rent is equal to the uh property uh the, what the payment for the mortgage payment is every every uh month the bank will loan you that with probably no credit check so you got to look at that it's called a uh, dscr loan i forgot the exact terminology for it but uh that's one thing for you know, a lot of young entrepreneurs that's a good way to start because i i started with one house and ended up with 15 at one time so you know that's that's a lot well, that's a lot, but it's also, it's a great cash flow. And as you just said, you become a business owner, an entrepreneur, and you know, you were a veteran, but you always have been interested in real estate and you've always been in multiple streams of income, which I think is so critical to your success. And, um, but I want to switch gears again on you. So let's talk commercial. Now you've also decided into um, getting into a flower shop. I know you don't own the property yet. You're just renting it, but talk about getting into the flower business and why you decided on that. Well, the flower business, we've been in business for a long time. My mother-in-law was in business down here a long time doing flowers. So we know a little bit about it. It was something easier to get into because we knew about it. And it's a pretty look, it's, it's pretty good business if you can, you know, get your margins down correctly and make sure that you're spending the right, correct money on the correct things. And you've got some pretty good people that are doing your designing. So it all goes about the designing, putting the amount of flowers in it should be. And also having a good wholesale, a good wholesaler, you know, to have, you know, that good product you're going to have and the great designer, which I have, which is in my, um, Mae Widener, who is my designer. And she's been doing it for 60 years. I'm lucky to have her. And, you know, she's really good at what she does. So that makes me look really good. Exactly. Uh, the flower business, business, I wouldn't say it'd be something you just jump into if you don't have a lot of knowledge. Good at. Right. But it's also important. I think, like you just mentioned, you have May, who's this incredible designer, flower designer. And I can say I've seen the arrangements myself. They are extraordinary. And part of it is 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 knowing that we all need a team. We can't do it alone. Whether it's real estate, whether it's owning a flower shop, we just... You can't do it by yourself. And will you talk a little bit about how important your team is to you? 
my team is very important to me. Without that, I don't know where I'd be, but that's been a part of my team for since I was a little boy. But, uh, little league football, basketball, you know, college, all that. All about being a team. You know, you got you can't do anything by yourself. It's mostly, you know, having others around you that have like minded ideas, values, and willing willing to have that extra push to get things done. And that's my thing. They do that all the time. They do excellent without me. You know, I, I was in the hospital for a while, never missed a beat. I never knew I was again. That's a great team. So yeah. Yeah. Really great. Time. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to go ahead and let people know. So will you tell them um, the website for your flower shop and any ways that they can find out more? Well, yes. Flower shop is, hold on a second. Give me one second. Flower shop. Yes. Is at 771 Main Street in Dunedin, Florida. Uh, we're right on the corner of New York and Maine. So we're a really good location. Uh, our phone number is 727 uh Four seven two seven four seven zero nine nine four four. I almost forgot my own phone number, but yeah, seven two seven four seven zero nine nine four four. So and, one uh, thing I would say that people probably don't know is that they can they could call you and order flowers for anywhere, right? Not just for in Florida. Anywhere in the country, and some other countries overseas as well. So we can do. I can't say I can get them anywhere, but I can get them about eighty percent of the work. Okay, so. Let me know if you need flowers anywhere in the country or outside the world, country. We can probably probably try to get them there as well. Yes, we do do that. We have a good service to get them get them delivered. And will you talk just because I know this is something so many people don't know. There's a huge difference between someone going to like the one eight hundred number to order um, arrangements. So I was curious if you just talk a little bit about that so that we could educate people on supporting businesses like yourself and I the appreciate, big difference of that. I appreciate you asking me that question, Jennifer. Yes, uh, the the order gatherers like 1-800-Flowers or FTD, they get like 43% of that order. So the, the, so the local florist has to put that order out. They have to do everything and they only get 57%. So you're really doing a disservice by calling them. You're better off going to a local flower florist where you can get more more for your money, and you won't have to worry about going through a third party because if something's wrong, they're, they're gonna, we're going to point you back to the wire service because they're the right. ones that took the order. So you're better off going with us. You get more for your money, and you get better satisfaction, and you're helping out small business. So that's a great good thing. Yes, I think all of those are so important. And again, because so many people don't know that, I didn't know that until I met you. And when you told me that, I was like, oh my gosh. Over all the years, I've ordered so many flowers for clients and, you know, for so many reasons. And I just thought, I wish I had known that because I, I would have made very different choices. So thank you for sharing that. And thank you for sharing um, today. I want to, we'll definitely have you back on, but today I'm just so glad and so grateful for you being here. And I'm going to ask you if you'll lift your voice and say yay with me as we go off the air. Is that okay? Of course, of course I will. Okay. Three, two, one. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you.